Frank Stilwell was an, an outlaw cowboy, gunman, and businessman, suspected of killing Morgan Ear. Frank was the son of William Henry Stilwell and Charlotte B. Sarah Winfrey. Frank was born in Iowa in 1856. Shortly afterward, the family moved to Kansas Territory to a location on the Santa Fe Trail. When he grew up, he and his brother Simpson were in Anadarko, Oklahoma, before traveling to Prescott, Arizona Territory, in 1877. Though his brother Simpson would take a more honorable path, becoming an Indian fighter, scout, deputy United States Marshal, police judge, and United States Commissioner, Frank was not destined to do so. While in Prescott, Frank worked at Miller's Ranch and killed another man after an argument. He was later acquitted on the grounds of self-defense. When Frank's brother Simpson left Arizona for Fort Davis, Texas, Frank remained in Arizona and then went to work as a teamster. Later, he staked a claim and worked a mine in Mojave County, and in 1879 got into another argument with a man over claim jumping. After brutally beating and killing the man with a rock, he was charged with murder but escaped a grand jury indictment for lack of evidence. Next, he made his way to Tombstone, where he hooked up with the Clanton gang and began a new career of cattle rustling. Thief or no, Johnny Behan appointed Stilwell as a Cochise County Deputy Sheriff in 1881. While acting in that capacity, he and a man named Pete Spence robbed the Tombstone Bisbee stage of $3,000 on September 8, 1881. Though arrested, they were acquitted not satisfied with this result, Wyatt Earp soon rounded them up and brought them in for a second trial, but they were again acquitted and released. In Tombstone, Stillwell prospered, perhaps with the help of the Clanton gang. He soon owned interests in several mines and various businesses, including a saloon, a wholesale liquor business, a stage line, and livery stables. After the gunfight at the OK Corral, the Earp suspected Stillwell, along with Ike Clanton, as having been the killers of Morgan Earp on March 18, 1882. Two days after Morgan was murdered, Wyatt and Warren Earp, along with Doc Holliday, ambushed Stillwell at the Tucson train station. His bullet-ridden body was found the next morning. Arrest warrants were issued for Earp and four others, and murder indictments were issued at Pima County for Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, Warren Earp, Sherman McMasters, and John Johnson. Earp agreed to turn himself in but fled the Arizona Territory for Colorado. Frank Stilwell's death sent shockwaves through the town of Tombstone. The citizens were divided in their opinions about the event. Some believed that justice had been served, considering Stilwell's involvement in criminal activities. Others saw it as an act of vigilantism, tarnishing the reputation of law enforcement. Wyatt Earp, the central figure in the events that unfolded, had become a controversial character. Some hailed him as a hero for taking matters into his own hands, while others labeled him a dangerous outlaw. Earp had always operated on his own terms, guided by his sense of justice and a desire to maintain order in a lawless land. As Earp fled to Colorado, a manhunt was launched by the Arizona authorities. The charges against Earp and his associates remained, and a bounty was placed on their heads. The media sensationalized the events, painting Earp as a notorious criminal and stirring public opinion against him. Earp, ever the shrewd tactician, knew that hiding in Colorado would only buy him time. He needed a plan to clear his name and find a way back to Tombstone without facing immediate arrest. With the help of his loyal friend Doc Holliday, Earp devised a strategy to gather evidence and gather support from influential figures in the region. Meanwhile, tensions in Tombstone escalated. The Clanton gang, seeking vengeance for Stillwell's death, began terrorizing the town. The citizens, caught in the crossfire, looked to the absent Earp for protection. They hoped that he would return and restore order. In Colorado, Ear and Holiday rallied support from key individuals who believed in their cause. These allies included influential politicians, law enforcement officials, and businessmen who saw the potential economic benefits of having a lawman like Earp in their region. With their help, Earp gathered evidence that could prove his innocence and shed light on Stillwell's criminal activities. Months passed as Earp meticulously built his case. He knew that returning to Tombstone would be risky, but the time had come to face the charges against him and bring the truth to light. The public opinion once against him 
started to shift as whispers of Stillwell's involvement in illicit activities reached the ears of the townsfolk. Finally, Earp and Holiday made their way back to Tombstone. The trial was a highly anticipated event, drawing crowds from all over. The courtroom was filled with tension as the prosecution presented its case, accusing Earp and his associates of murder. The defense, armed with evidence of Stillwell's criminal history, fought back, painting a picture of a man who had brought chaos to Tombstone. The trial lasted for weeks, with witnesses testifying on both sides. The verdict would determine the fate of Earp and his companions, as well as the future of law enforcement in the region. The jury deliberated for hours, carefully weighing the evidence and the arguments presented. In the end, the verdict was delivered. The jury found Earp and his associates not guilty of the charges against them. The courtroom erupted in chaos as supporters cheered and opponents expressed their outrage. The town of Tombstone, still divided, had to come to terms with the outcome. Earp, once again a free man, stood before the crowd. He made a heartfelt speech, expressing his gratitude to those who had stood by him and vowing to continue his mission of upholding the law. The people of Tombstone, weary from the violence and turmoil, listened intently, hoping for a new era of peace. In the aftermath of the trial, Tombstone began to heal. The Clanton gang's influence waned, and the town slowly regained its stability. Earp, true to his word, worked tirelessly to restore order and create a safer environment for its residents. He implemented new policies, hired capable deputies, and ensured that justice was served without resorting to vigilantism. Earp's reputation underwent a transformation. While some still held onto their negative perception of him, many others recognized his efforts in restoring peace and order. He became a symbol of justice, a man who had risked everything to protect the innocent and maintain lawfulness in the Wild West. Over time, Tombstone flourished under Earp's leadership. Businesses thrived, attracting new settlers and investors. The town became a hub of commerce and opportunity, shedding its notorious reputation and embracing a brighter future. Earp's determination and commitment to his duty also caught the attention of higher authorities. Recognizing his exceptional skills as a lawman, the federal government offered him a position as a United States Marshal. It was an opportunity for Earp to expand his reach beyond Tombstone and contribute to the establishment of law and order in other regions plagued by criminal activities. Accepting the offer, Earp bid farewell to Tombstone, but left behind a legacy that would never be forgotten. His name became synonymous with bravery, integrity, and the unwavering pursuit of justice. He continued his career as a lawman, making significant contributions to the law enforcement efforts in various territories. As the years passed, Frank Stilwell's name faded into obscurity. History remembered him as an outlaw cowboy killer, forever linked to the turbulent times of Tombstone. However, the tale of Wyatt Earp and his fight for justice endured, inspiring future generations of lawmen and reminding them of the importance of upholding the law, even in the face of adversity. And so, the story of Frank Stilwell, the outlaw cowboy killer, became a mere footnote in the larger narrative of the Wild West, while the legend of Wyatt Earp continued to captivate the imagination of those who heard his name. The tale of Tombstone and its notorious characters served as a reminder of the untamed frontier and the relentless pursuit of justice that defined an era.